everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel and my podcast. I'm so happy to be back with my dear guest, Candles Candice Hazeltine from Australia. How are you? I'm so great. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you. I'm so happy that we met. And um, I want everyone, our listeners and viewers, to know a little bit of about you. Can you please share who you are and what you do? Yeah, of course. So I'm a, I'm a coach and I'm a counselor. I've got a huge background in psychology. I have an absolute passion for the mind and the body and how it all interconnects and works and then how we can utilize that with spirit as well. So I'm very big on understanding and practicing things to do with um, the mind, the body and the spirit. So that's the work that I do now. I've got a big background in media as well. I worked in media in Australia for 10 years as a radio and TV presenter. So in that time was exposed to so many different people from, you know, big celebrities to everyday people calling in on the phone. And I'm just fascinated with human behavior. So I made the decision just around COVID time to come back to this work. Amazing. Um, I met I met I met Candace through my coach, Tyler Erickson. Um, yes. she's from Australia. I just finished my NLP training and my life changed 180. Mm. Uh, I always I always used to say 360, but <laughs> 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 it's not good. 360 is not good. So it's 180. That's where you were. <laughs> and uh, and I come from a plant medicine background. I've been doing this work for the past five years with a lot of ceremonies and NLP finally helped me integrate all the beauty. Mm. And now I feel super complete and healed and I can stop smiling. And that's why I'm now sharing this with everybody. I'm just giving it, giving it away. So um, today I wanna to talk to you about relationships. Yes. Most important <laughs> because my latest episodes, it's always around money and training and getting off the matrix. And I feel my audience really needs to hear this information. How do we have a healthy and happy relationships where both partners are actually thriving in it? Yeah, beautiful relationships is my favorite thing to talk about because as humans, we tend to crave that connection, right, with another. And it does come back to tribal times. So in community, you can really get um, a sense of, uh, validation from somebody else. And it's nice to have that co-regulation. It's nice to have somebody to share things that you do with. So relationships can be the most incredible thing in our life. And then as you may have experienced, Juliet, or some of your listeners may have experienced when relationships aren't going great. And sometimes when we're not in a relationship and we're seeking one, it can be the worst times of our life. <laughs> your relationship can have an impact on every other part of your life. Yes, um, when the relationship is not go well, I used to blame the other, but now yes. I know that it's actually me. <laughs> so I want to talk about that. How do we take responsibility and why would the relationship not go well? Like what would be the yeah. reasons? Yeah, so what you're referring to there is something that people would learn through NLP and it's, it's a bit of psychology as well. So perception is projection, right? So whatever's going on inside of our minds, we will create in our external world to validate the belief that we've got going on internally. So what that means, the perception is what you perceive externally and what the meaning that you make of it will be the belief systems that you've got in your mind. And then what happens is we, we tend to project outwards to get a reflection back of what we believe. So, so actually when you're in a relationship and so this can be explained in lots of different ways. So I'll try and do it in the simplest way. So when you're in a relationship, all of your stuff from the past, so everything that happened to you as a child, and they can be big traumas or little traumas, they will show up in your relationship. So your partner will actually become your parent until you do the inner work and you see that you're projecting your wounding into your relationship does this make sense <laughs> absolutely absolutely that's why i'm single <laughs> <laughs> that's why i think most women give up on love yes maybe most men too we yeah it's easy to blame right so it's like so this is all unconscious 
So it's all unconscious. But whatever happens in your relationship is actually you as well. So those thoughts that you're having about your partner, they are you too. So if we have judgments about our partner, that they're lazy or or they're annoying, the question that I would ask my clients is, well, where are you being lazy or annoying? Or where are you not being lazy enough or annoying enough? So the projection isn't always necessarily the obvious thing. So it's like once you learn this concept of perception is projection, you go, okay, my judgment is that they're lazy. So maybe I'm lazy. That's not necessarily the case. The truth is you might be overworking and really busy in your mind. So you're actually not lazy enough. So the annoying thing about them is that they're doing that thing that you actually need to do more of. I see. Which is take time for yourself and rest. I know. Yeah. Now I do that. And um, in my experience, now I did the work. I'm, I feel 110% complete within me. My standards are higher. <laughs> now I tend to not like many whereas before i would settle oh this is the best i got and uh i guess with age you know how they say the more you know the harder it gets so i guess my question is is it harder when you get smarter to find a partner i don't believe so you value yourself more no i don't i don't believe so so juliet when so I'm in a reasonably new relationship with Tyler and he is a wonderful man so for anybody who has seen that that interview that you've done with him he is an incredible integrated man and what I say by integrated is he's somebody who's gone and done a lot of the personal development work and he's really embodied it so he practices it on a daily basis he practices it in his work he practices it in his relationship with me and triggers from the past just aren't present right so we met when we both reached a level where we would be able to relate in that capacity and the truth is about Tyler is that I actually met him months before I properly met him and I hadn't finished doing the work on myself I hadn't completely integrated and I didn't see him at the party Mm. I actually had no awareness that he was at the party I was at, even though we were standing in front of each other at one point and I was introduced. I don't remember him because I was still on the journey myself. Can we talk about this? How actually the vibrations when it's not matching, we are blind. Yes. Yeah. So it's, so everything is energy, right? And everything has a frequency and you can be so caught up in your own frequency that things around you, they just don't resonate. And this is how people tend to attract partners that can end up with toxic entanglements or, or yeah, it's probably the best way to explain it, partners that can, that can bring out the, the worst traits in us because that's the frequency that we're focusing on. When you're vibing high as you are and you said that you feel like you've elevated, you feel like you're integrated. So you're just stepping into this new beautiful energy and what's going to start slowly or quickly, however you want it, creating more of in your external world is what's being reflected inside. And as you resonate that frequency more and more and your external world changes and you're going to be drawing in more partners that are matching your frequency and when we're sitting in our stuff or when we're going through our healing journey um I don't know if your listeners resonate with this this was true for me I was attracting a lot of others who were also on their healing journey yes and it, it became toxic because you've got two people and what we tend to see in others is our wound yeah we unconsciously see our wound in others so so yeah energetically I really suggest doing something like NLP, which is the glue that ties everything together. It ties the plant medicine journeys. It ties all the personal development, the books that you've done. It's like, it just goes, and all of a sudden you're like, wow. <laughs> and now what you'd be creating in your external world is a completely new reality. Actually also, I think taking the time to be alone and yes. 
yeah like i call those people the space fillers because i don't want to be alone so i will just hang with anybody i'm not like that i'm just giving an example i'd rather be alone than be in an unhappy relationship i'm one of those super for me it's so important if i go to sleep i go to sleep happy <laughs> so i don't let anyone in so that's i have a really big wall since yeah. the nlp training my wall is still thick but it's transparent yes so now i can see who's valuing me i can see if my values are being seen my boundaries are being respected um what would you suggest to someone who wants who is in the relationship mm. but she or he doesn't feel appreciated but the, and they're in love, they don't necessarily want to break up, how they can heal that? What would yeah. you suggest? Yeah, open, vulnerable communication. So this is about really being able to ask each other, like, what do you want? What do you need? And be okay with the answer regardless. Yeah, yeah. and so to be able to hold that, hold that with a space of no judgment and be like okay wow um this is what i can do with the resources that i have today and the capacity that i have today this is how i can meet those needs these are needs that i can't meet and also knowing that it's okay to have your partner actually not be able to meet all of your needs yeah and it's okay to say no to meeting somebody's needs because ultimately a relationship is like a container right it's like a creation space for happiness. So a lot of people get into a relationship looking for happiness because at the beginning, what we put forward is all of our good stuff. It's all of our great stuff. It's all of the good parts of our personality and we like that other person. So we want to do things to make them happy. That can die over a space of six to nine months. The honeymoon honeymoon stage. Yeah, the, the honeymoon stage. Yeah, it's related to the hormones, right? When the hormones are all active and that's why they say love is blind because I don't know how to explain it scientifically, but there's a scientific reason. There is, yeah. If you know, you're more than welcome to share. Um, yeah, it's, it's exactly what you just said. It's just that the influx of hormones and the dopamine, serotonin, and everything feels good. And oh my God, my needs are being met. I'm not alone. I've got my partner in crime. I've got someone to go out and have fun with. And someone's listening and validating me and loving me. And I'm having great sex. Hopefully, hopefully it also includes great sex. And then it's just natural that that dissipates over time. It's usually six to nine months. And if you look back over history, History, what used to happen with our grandmas or our great grandparents was that at about nine months, uh, you know, there would usually be some or six to nine months, there'd be an engagement or a wedding so that you could then consummate the marriage and connect sexually. And then kids would come along. Yes. So, so historically, once kids come along, the, the woman doesn't desire sex so much. And the attention moved from the relationship to the children. The children, yeah, we're biologically designed to procreate. So, so with this knowledge, we can work with these things, right? Knowing that, okay, well, everyone's going to put their best foot forward in the beginning. So, so having open, vulnerable communication from the beginning is beautiful. It's an easy way to introduce it ongoing. So it's like this. So every relationship has communication patterns. You would have communication patterns with your friends, with your parents. And what I mean by communication patterns is people start to get to know your quirks, right? They tend to know how you're going to respond to something. So you have that in your relationship. If you can form it from the beginning that our communication is open and it's vulnerable and we get to speak our truth all the time, it will stay and it'll just be easy. If you've been in a relationship for a while and you need to bring that in, there's just a knowing that, okay, maybe this is going to feel like a hard conversation because we actually haven't heard each other's proper truth before. And the truth is probably the thing that you're too scared to say to anybody. You know, that deep core stuff. Yep. You say it over and over in your head. Maybe you can say it to yourself in the mirror. 
that you're too scared to really admit it. And this can come down to like deep desires, you know, like this can come down to like sexual fantasies that you feel like you're missing or, or just the fact that you've got an expectation. I really expect you to take the rubbish out all the time. That just makes me happy. And I just need that. <laughs> yeah. Totally agree. Every relationship has those unspoken truths. Um, I'm from Turkey. And in our tradition, it's funny you say that. They make sure you get married or engaged by the three months. <laughs> and oh. you get married by the six month and you have a child. And then the marriage is binded contract. You married forever. And yeah. here, I realize in America, it's kind of the same. So the woman played the game to hook the man. Um, <laughs> but now what I'm hearing is don't get married or commitment. Six to nine months, get to know each other, live together if possible before you make a commitment. I would love to know the partner that I'm deciding to move forward with. I want to know all the dark sides and the light. Yes. And be okay yeah. with it. And now my goal is to actually... Um, have an unconditional and not a codependent relationship so I'm fine by myself yeah. you come and you're just a bonus you know what I mean does that yeah. make sense so yeah it's gonna add to your life right like is it yeah yeah and like it's gonna add is, as a bonus like it's gonna yeah. be like I'm okay but it's extra fun with you now um, but I have a thing that I think naturally men wants to be needed, right? Or is that a wrong assumption on my end? There's no that, right or wrong. So manly, <laughs> like they want to be needed. Yeah. So, so what you're referring to there is some biology. Yeah. So, so in like, if we, if we think back to tribal times, men hunted and women gathered. Yeah. So, so that still is in biology and it shows up in relationships in modern day ways. Um, a lot of people talk about polarity, relationship polarity, and there is an element of when I, when I work with couples in relationships or I work with men individually, a common complaint from men is that they don't feel appreciated. Mm. Or I don't feel needed. Yeah. So yeah. So it's men have a deep burning desire, whether they know it or not to devote to something so a lot of men will have a major shift in their life when they become a parent for the first time because that sense of devotion my life is now devoted to protecting and caring and looking after you it can be triggered in relationships as well if a woman is you know truly truly operating in her feminine and because when we talk about need it's not need from the perspective of I'm just going to be needy and you know this this is a man job so you should do a man job it's it's like it's deeper than that it's like a core I'm like for you in particular it's like okay I'm solid on my own I'm choosing you and my my basic expectations of you in this relationship is that you will keep me physically safe that you, that you will provide if you need to provide because I'm going to have a baby. So that, that kind of need. And when a man feels appreciated in that way because he's providing those basic needs and you don't necessarily, like you really, at the end of the day, you don't need it, need it, but you're allowing as the feminine for him to give so you can receive, that's, that's the kind of need that works. Right now, in, we are in 2022, and many women, actually, a businesswoman, there is CEOs, there are breadwinners, some men stays home, takes care of the children, and it's normal. What would you recommend since this I need to be appreciated or I love being needed? It's in the biology of the men. 
yeah how women can support their men in that area like what should we do i'm a queen i mean i'm i'm like you know and i'm talking yeah. to the queens the queens are listening to this podcast and watching this video and yeah. i love to honor my men it's yeah. not it's not a burden for me of it, course i really appreciate that and i want to give that to him yeah so a queen has a king right yeah the queen isn't messing around with any of the knights some queens might like a knight <laughs> Yeah, I'm very loyal, I'm sure. <laughs> We're talking about people who are really committed and in love. 100%, yeah. So a queen has a king and a king, like a true king, is so, so leadership is a quiet quality, right? Leadership isn't necessarily outspoken. So a true king is going to be quite an integrated man who really understands his emotions, who knows how to express them and knows how to express his needs and can have really great honest conversation with you. A true king is more than happy for his queen to go and rule her kingdom as well because he sees her value and he sees her strength and he that's something that he actually admires. So how that works together is actually quite beautiful synergy in that you both value each other's strength and you vote, both value those qualities in each other. So you, you, it's like alchemy. Yeah. Like you just, you just work in that in, in ease and grace. So when it comes to valuing him, it's just, it's noticing those qualities in him because they actually already exist within you as well. And just, just recognizing that in the way that, because everybody has their love languages as well. So it's really great to know your partner's love language and communicate that so so in valuing your your king your partner it's really if, if it's quality time doing quality time if it's words of affirmation like speaking it to him I, I I appreciate how you made that decision I appreciate when you organized dinner thank you like it's it's the simplest things but it's just consistency in that um after doing the <clears throat> training my NLP training, I learned about the strategies, which is very helpful in yes. business, in day-to-day -day life. And I feel it's also very helpful to speak with others because you can hear them and they can hear you because they're speaking the same language. I want to talk about the importance of linguistics, actually how to apply it into relationships. Yeah, of course. So so relationships are interesting when it comes to, so, so the actual, when you study NLP and you learn the linguistics, what it does is it actually helps sort a lot of your own stuff out. So as we were talking earlier, the projections in a relationship stop, the blame stops, and it becomes a process of, oh, I'm just instantly going to look at me. And you've got the tools and processes to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so linguistically, you naturally change. Yes. When you integrate this work and your beliefs change. 100%. And they, yeah. Your values change as well. It be, everything becomes more aligned and what it becomes aligned with is the path of your higher self. I rewrote my blueprint basically. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it, it changes you so much internally and then things change externally. When it comes to communicating in my relationship with Tyler, I don't think about linguistics and I know that my communication is completely different to what it is in any other relationship I've had. It's a natural evolution. When we do use linguistics is if and Tyler's been in this work a lot longer than the, the, the NLP side of work it's longer than I Language, I mean. <laughs> so every now and again, if I hit a hurdle, because my business is growing like wildfire. So what I'm coming up against personally is every now and again, I, I hit a little hurdle of like, oh, is this possible? Is this possible? <laughs> because every human ultimately has a wound of being enough, right? Yes. Unworth, unworthiness <laughs> so new new level new devil so I've hit a couple of those recently in my business and so 
we occasionally use linguistics then to really iron out the problem. And that's where it can become really useful in a relationship. You just said new, no, new level. New, new level, new that, devil. That's a belief that you implemented. That knows so, well. <laughs> but I don't necessarily buy that, for example. Yeah, so. I never believe, to be honest. I feel every belief is a limiting. Every 100%. belief is limiting. So now I question every belief. And yeah. because of the linguistics, I always aim to speak towards what I want. Yes. So yes. I guess in my personal opinion, what we can recommend or I can recommend to the listeners in the relationship always speaks towards positive. Yeah. So, so it's, yeah, it's absolutely true. So there's our, our thoughts create our feelings. Yes. What actually comes first is the thought and then the feeling follows. And depending where people are on their journey, sometimes feelings can feel all consuming, like that's real and it's not real. What's real is the thought that, that preceded it. And so when we're choosing a negative thought or something limiting, what we're also doing is we're refusing to choose something amazing because we've got a choice in every moment. So, so thoughts are really powerful. And, and what this actually comes back to too is the values levels. So there's like seven values levels for people. And it just depends what values level you're, you're integrating through at the time. Mm -hmm. it, the, the truth is like when it comes to personal development, it's, it's not as if everything's always going to be perfect. Sometimes things do come up and they, they can, the most that they come up is when you're in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, what are you talking about? This NLP thing doesn't work. Hundred <laughs> percent. So I, right, so, I just want to be upset right now. <laughs> yeah. So and that's the thing. And this is this is real. So when when I first did my training that you did, I came out and I was like, oh my god, like you know, just no, that's your problem. That's your problem, and <laughs> nothing's real, and blah blah blah. But the the truth is, occasionally things can come up occasionally they can and what when they do tend to come up the most is relationship because relationship is the thing that most closely replicates home and everybody had an imprinting stage from the age of zero to seven this is when most of your beliefs were formed about the world about yourself it's where you got all your values from and part of that personal development journey is really starting to discover well what's mine what's truly mine and what hasn't been instilled in me from family, from school, from society, from government, what's truly mine? And that's the beautiful thing about plant medicine journeys is because it removes a lot of that conscious stuff and starts to get you in touch with the essence of who you are and who you are in relation to the earth and spirit. Plant medicine goes all the way back to the beginning. Yeah. Six generations, mom six generations that is in you yes she will clear in a dna level yeah. after that she's going to take you to present and she's going to show you what you need to fix and that's mm. where nlp comes into place yes because it gives the tools exactly. the tools to move forward yeah <laughs> tell me about your upcoming program that you were telling me that you're about to launch a program for couples or it's for singles or yeah for individuals or singles so so all um all works so when I whenever I work with couples in a relationship I work with the couples individually so they both have their individual time and together mm -hmm. because everything is about the self-work so if you want to heal your relationship and have a better relationship or find a great one you need to do the self-work so I do have a program coming up. It starts in about three weeks time and it's called rewilding and rewilding is about coming back to the essence of what we we're just talking about, who you really are at your core. And it is also a tool to bring together everything that you've done so far on your personal development journey. I'll be teaching things like great linguistics that we've been speaking about. There are NLP practices in there. There is hypnosis there is neuroscience or psychology. It's just a beautiful five-week journey to get you ready for a great relationship 
or to heal the one that you're in, to give you the tools to heal it. Oh, I was, I was sharing that I tell everyone that our yeah. brain is like a software, the yes. computer software, and I'm over 40 years old, so it came to this planet, you know, 40 years ago, and it was uploaded some applications from zero to seven, and I was operating from those applications until now, and yeah. now we have a tool to actually go back in there and change it. It's exactly what it is. It's because whatever is whatever you learnt from zero to seven, you've been recreating in your external world to one degree or another since then. Exactly. Exactly. All of your relationships, your friendships, the jobs, everything, the money that you've created is all representative of that that time. Yes. And Why? Until <laughs> recently, I still was struggling how to change that programming. I yeah. feel um, your coaching can help because you're covering neuroscience and psychology and linguistics and hypnosis. And you said it's five weeks. Yeah, it's five weeks. So there's, yeah, there's more than 20 years of research in this because I'm also a yoga teacher. So I'm also very much into the ancient philosophy and looking at how things have been done over the longest periods of time. Mm -hmm. So this, this, this program does have change work in there that, as you just said, change work is what changes the unconscious mind that keeps people stuck in programs so you're right plant medicine can show the way of what needs to be done in the now and then this program is the tools to do the work to get the change and I'm going to offer it to your listeners Juliet because you're amazing for cheaper so I'm actually going to give you a code and people can get this. So it's, it is $1,100 in Australia. And for you guys, I think, I don't know what the conversion is on. That's probably like $60 for you guys. <laughs> I think it comes down to um, $700 for the five weeks. From $1,100 to $700. So this is like 30% discount. Yeah. So it's $1,100 in Australia, which makes it about, I think, 800 or something for us so it's like 10 percent discount doesn't and matter then I'm, you can tell and then I'm giving you a discount on top of that so it will come down to about 700 dollars for your listeners which is huge yeah, yeah. <laughs> what i do for you guys <laughs> <laughs> so i'm only gonna